Howdy everyone, and today I'm checking out quite a popular lens for mirrorless cameras, the Sigma 30mm f1.4 DC DNC. It's available on Sony E-mount, Micro Four Thirds mount mirrorless cameras, and now on Canon EOS M mirrorless cameras. It won't work on any other system. It's $340 in the US and £270 in the UK, that's very good value for money for an autofocus lens with such a wide maximum aperture. There's a story behind this review, I actually tested out a copy of this lens on Sony E-mount over the summer, but before I published the review, I heard it was coming for Canon EF-M mount, and I thought it might be interesting to test both versions of the lens, to see if there were any differences in handling, and also to see its image quality on both a 24 megapixel sensor and 32 megapixel. We'll come to the image quality tests in a minute. I sourced out the Sony version of the lens myself, but I'd like to thank Sigma UK for loaning me a Canon copy of the lens for a week or so for testing. As usual though, this is a totally independent review. When shooting with an aperture as wide as f1.4, you can shoot in dark conditions and indoors far more easily than with a darker aperture lens, and also, you can get far more out of focus backgrounds in your images and that 30mm focal length is the full frame equivalent of about 45mm, a lovely standard field of view. Wide angle enough to get the bigger picture a bit, but tight enough that you can get a good emphasis on your subject, so this could potentially be a really useful piece of kit. Let's start by looking at its build quality. The lens's exterior design is pretty unassuming, it's hardly a thing of beauty. It feels solid and metallic, but only weighs 265 grams, just over half a pound. Its front filter thread size is a small 52mm wide. The only control point on the lens is a nicely rubberized focus ring. It turns smoothly, but a little too easily, so if you're shooting in manual focus you can accidentally change your setting. I found that turning the manual focus ring worked a little more responsively on my Canon EOS M6 Mark II camera than my Sony cameras. The lens's autofocus motor works completely silently. On my Sony camera, it worked quite quickly, and on my Canon camera, well, the Canon version worked even faster, and nice and accurately too, that's pretty much lightning fast, an impressive performance. It comes with quite a deep lens hood for free. Overall, the lens isn't exactly good looking, but its build quality is simple, small and solid, and it works just fine. Let's move on and have a look at image quality. Firstly, here are the results when I mounted it onto my Sony A5100 with its 24 megapixel APS-C sized sensor. At f1.4, image quality is fantastically sharp with good contrast in the middle of the image, although there is just a touch of purple fringing visible here. The corners are a bit soft, with somewhat weak contrast and a little colour fringing. At f2, the image quality is about the same there, but back in the middle, the purple fringing is gone and contrast looks great. At f2.8, the image quality is brilliant in the middle, and the corners have improved a little too, and at f4, the corners are pretty sharp now. It stays this sharp all the way down to f11. So overall, the lens gives you quite usable sharpness, although corner image quality is not brilliant at the widest apertures. I imagine on a Micro Four Thirds camera, the picture quality might look even better. That smaller sized sensor will use the sharper middle portion of the lens's projected image. Now then, let's mount the Canon version of the lens onto my Canon EOS M6 Mark II camera with its incredibly demanding 32.5 megapixel sensor, which poses an incredible challenge to all but the sharpest of lenses. At f1.4, sharpness in the middle remains strong, although that purple fringing is magnified a little bit, the corners are looking pretty soft. At f2, contrast picks up just a little in those corners, back in the middle, the purple fringing is gone and sharpness looks brilliant. At f2.8, it's just as good there, but the corners are still a little weak. At f4 though, we see an improvement, just like on a Sony version of the lens, 
and there are further tiny improvements at f5.6 and f8. Stop down as far as f11 or further and you'll begin to see increased softness from the effects of diffraction. So, on the incredibly difficult sensor of the Canon camera, the Sigma lens is plenty sharp in the middle of your images, but the corners are struggling. Well, let's move on now and have a look at distortion and vignetting. The lens projects some strong barrel distortion, unfortunately. At f1.4, there's some noticeable vignetting, or darkness in the corners. That vignetting remains quite strong at f2, but stop down to f2.8 and it's greatly reduced. This lens can focus as closely as 30 centimeters, quite handy for shooting smaller subjects. At f1.4, the close-up image quality is a little soft, but worst of all is its terribly low contrast. Stop down to f2, and sharpness and contrast are back, and stop down to f2.8 for a touch more sharpness on top. How does the lens work against bright light? Really well, actually. Contrast remains really high, and there's not too much in the way of flaring. And while we're shooting in the dark, let's have a look at some coma levels. At f1.4, bright points of light display a lot of highlighting and some coma smearing. At f2, though, that is reduced. Let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. It's not the smoothest bokeh in the world, but there's nothing seriously distracting going on here. Deeply out of focus backgrounds look nice and smooth. One issue that doesn't help the bokeh is this lens's longitudinal chromatic aberration at wide apertures. If you're wondering what that means, it means this. Purple highlighting in front of the focus point and green behind when you're shooting at the widest apertures. It's a little strong on this particular lens. Overall, the Sigma 30mm f1.4 DC DNC is reasonably sharp good value for money, and its wide maximum aperture offers some good creative potential. It's certainly a useful lens, and I was really impressed with how well it worked on my Canon EOS M camera, particularly the autofocus was brilliant. Its bokeh can look a little awkward sometimes, and its barrel distortion is a bit strong, which is a pet peeve of mine, but it's certainly become a fairly popular lens for Sony cameras, and Canon EOS M owners will be pleased to have it as an option as well, and it is undeniably good value for money, so I can recommend it.